And I realized that as I was trying to heal myself, I was literally taking myself through school, reading things that I had never read in school. Now, con consider this for a moment. I was in school for eight years. OK, I got two undergraduate degrees, science degrees. OK, four years, another four years in pharmacy school. OK, not to count the countless clinical hours that I've had in a hospital setting. I started working for a hospital over 15 years ago. OK, <laughs> so just put that in, in consideration. Eight years of scientific health studies, eight years, all right? 15 years working as a clinician, yet, yet and still none of these things were taught to me. So as I started my health and healing journey, trying to heal myself of high blood pressure and gaining a tremendous amount of weight, when I came out of undergrad, I do believe I was somewhere around 190 pounds, okay? By the time I left pharmacy school, I was around about 245. All right. So I had gained almost 60 pounds. <laughs> so hugely important. I was literally trying to heal myself. And as I'm trying to heal myself with modern medicine, what I had actually been taught in school and the same thing your doctor would tell you, nothing was working. Nothing was helping the weight go off my body. I would lose five or 10 pounds. And then two weeks later, the five or 10 pounds comes back. The sleep apnea wouldn't resolve. I had sleep apnea. So that was affecting not only my blood pressure, but my heart as well, too. My sleep, my quality of sleep, the high blood pressure that I got diagnosed with when I was 16 years old. Nothing helped that either. Even the medication, even though it would lower my blood pressure, I still had the symptoms that I didn't know about until I, because I know the body from a holistic picture now, but I was still experiencing the symptoms. And as we know, the vast majority of people who have heart attacks and strokes, they're on medication when they have the heart attack or stroke. So the point I'm trying to make to you is that the, the foundation in which the healthcare system is based on and built on, the foundation in which the institutions that create those healthcare professionals that administer the, the health to the patients, to the population, to the people, the foundation of which is built on is not actually built on health. It's not built on healing someone. And once I understood that, that is when I wiped my hands clean of trying to heal myself with the knowledge that I had attained over the course of eight years in school, okay, almost a decade, and another 15 years as a clinician, okay? So at that point, I'm thinking to myself like, okay, I've been over here on the, on the side of chemistry that doesn't favor healing. And I was the obvious case. Nothing changed my conditions. A CPAP machine for sleep apnea, although can help you, is not a remedy. Blood pressure medication, although it'll lower your blood pressure, it is not a remedy. It is only attacking the symptom, which is the high blood pressure, not the actual cause that is causing the high blood pressure. Okay? The weight gain, which creates so many other health issues, the almost 50 to 60 pounds that I gained, that was causing problems with my back, that was caught probably contributing to the sleep apnea. None of the, the chemistry and the biology that I learned in the eight years that I was in school helped me at all with it. OK, so I wiped my hands clean of it. I said, OK, I've been on the side of chemistry that is known as inorganic synthetic chemistry. All right. Let's go on the side that is actually organic chemistry, which being organic means life. OK, let's go on the side of living. OK, and that is plant medicine. That is food as medicine, living food. And when I made that switch and started to understand why these things were working, this is what I'm going to share with you to you guys today. The eight essentials to health and healing. This is why so many people are so sick and overweight. Seventy five percent of Americans are either overweight or obese. 
75%. It is more common. It is more common to be overweight and obese than it is to be a healthy weight. Okay. 60 to 70% of Americans are on at least one prescription drug. That means that it is more common for people to be sick and have a chronic disease than it is for people to actually be healthy. Okay. So we are in a sick, overweight society. We're in a society that is by far the most obese and overweight society that has ever existed in human existence. Put that in framework, the most obese, the most overweight, and the sickest society that has ever existed in human existence. Okay, and it's because we don't, we don't teach these principles that I'm about to share. And we don't actually use these principles in practice. And as a result, either on a personal level or when you go to your doctor, your clinic, your, your hospital. And this is why people not only are so sick, this is why people stay sick and they get worse. They do not teach us this. OK, what I'm about to share with you, they do not require it. They do not teach it. OK. All right. So let's get started. I mean, I, I can go on my soapbox for hours, but you can imagine what it's like to actually think that you're helping people and to discover that you're not helping people and that you're in many cases, you're making the situation actually worse. And the guilt that comes with that and the hypocrisy that comes with that and the feeling duped because I put eight years and hundreds of thousands of dollars into my education. And the idea that I thought I was on a path, that I was on the wrong track, you can imagine how I felt when I when I discovered that I had been going a thousand miles in the wrong direction. OK, so these are the eight essentials to health. They do not teach doctors. They do not teach pharmacists, nurses. They do not teach healthcare professionals. All right. Number one, number one is toxicity. OK, yeah, there's a class called toxicology. But they don't teach toxicity from a standpoint of how it's coming into our bodies and how it affects our health, the type of toxins that are the most common, okay, the household toxins, the food toxins and chemicals, the toxins that are in the air, the toxins that are in the water. They don't teach that fluoride is a toxin, so people think it's normal for it to be in water or that chlorine is in water or chloramine that they're adding to water. Nobody knows that these things are actually carcinogens. Okay. Nobody knows what a, what, what a, a PFOA is. Okay. And how it's in basically all of your pots and pans. And every time you cook, you're putting that toxin into your food and it's known to be a carcinogen that causes cancer. They don't teach you that 70% of the standard American diet is process, highly processed foods that are filled with toxins, okay? And what impact does that have on your health? What what accumulation, how does that accumulate in the body? Because most of the time when they're studying, tox, studying the toxins, they're studying them individually. But when you look at a label for one food product, there's at least 50 chemicals in a lot of the food products, just one that people are consuming and people are consuming multiples every day. Not to mention that's just food. We're not talking about what you wash your clothes with. We're not talking about the things that you clean your house with. We're not talking about what's in the water, what's in the air. So we didn't, we never consider what is the accumulative effect on a biology level or a biochemistry level of all of these toxins accumulating in our bodies, do they leave? <laughs> yeah, we may look at a toxin or a heavy metal individually and see what happens, you know, on an individual level, but we're talking about thousands, tens of thousands of chemicals that we're putting in our bodies on a daily basis for decades that is accumulating in the tissues on a cellular level. They don't teach us about that. 
So as a result, when you go into the doctor, you may have, have heavy metal toxicity and you may have worked at a heavy metal plant. You may have worked at a concrete plant where there's a lot of heavy metals in there. Okay. They never consider that. Rarely is that ever considered. Or that if you're pescatarian and the heavy metals that you're getting, all that mercury that you're getting from all of the fish, because you don't know that certain type of fish accumulate heavy levels of mercury. So then you start to, you thinking to yourself, well, I'm pescatarian. I'm primarily eating mostly plants with a little bit of fish here. But you have, you go into the doctor, you're having cognitive issues. We're having nervous system issues. You're having gut issues. And you never attribute that to the fact that could it be the heavy metals? And the reason why the doctor never attributes that to your health issue is because we're not taught that. We're not taught to look for these type of things, especially in the society that we live in today. 